Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back. We are here in day two of theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath Forward 2024. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside my co-host and analyst, Dave Vellante. You know, the thing is, there's so much content going on, like we, we have to miss some of the keynotes to do a CUBE interviews. We're going deep on some of these CUBE interviews, though. Indeed. It's been good. Luckily, we have some of the, the stars of the keynote stage joining us here. We, I'd like to welcome Craig LeClaire. He is the VP Principal Analyst at Forrester. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming Great to be on. here. Thanks for my return trip to CUBE. That's Indeed, great. a CUBE alum and another illustrious CUBE alum, Bobby Patrick. He is, of course, the CMO of UiPath. I always enjoy being here. Thank Craig. you so much. So Craig, I'm going to start with you because we got to do a quick plug of your of your new book, which is coming out in January. It is called Random Acts of Automation. Uh, oh. Congratulations, not your first book, I should mention. Ta tell our viewers a little bit about, about the, the thrust, the idea that you're putting forward here. Yeah, so the basic idea is that um, all this technology we're talking about here, whether it's agents or agentic, is really going to affect the workforce. And a lot of the books about this are written for the business community, or they're written for the tech people like me and Bobby, you know, and you. Um, this one's written for workers. You know, the, the idea is not to try to forecast how many jobs will be lost. I think we've realized that we can't do that. You know, but really to look at the shifts in the workforce that are going to occur. So you might be a middle worker and worried about becoming a gig driver, right? Because you see what's happening with the agents that are doing your work. You know, you might be a professional uh, that's worried that your credentials are not going to matter that much with uh, LLMs and AI bots that are doing it. And you might be a service worker that's uh, wondering what these Android robots are doing uh, coming into your workplace. So <clears throat> this is a blueprint <laughs> for workers so they can navigate uh, this, this path towards really human, uh, human capable automation is the term I use in the book. And it's uh, hopefully will be read by workers and, and help them. So if you're a mom and you know your son's been in the basement for six months uh, playing video games, <laughs> go out and get this and uh, give it to him. Say you know get and out and read it yourself. And read it, you... read it yourself. We all need it. Indeed. We all we're going to have to deal with this. Indeed. But thank you very much. Uh, that's uh, unexpected uh, pumping of the book. Yeah. Good luck with that. Thanks. It's uh, it's a big effort uh, to to write a book and a lot of time and, and energy goes into it. So hope it takes off for you. Bobby, you gave uh, takeaways from day one, which we really appreciated. Rebecca and I unpacked them very briefly, but yep. while we have the author of those here, totally agree, single agents are kind of boring, co-pilots. Yep. Benioff calls it clippy. I thought that was very clippy funny. Duo. <laughs> and clippy probably, duo. that was uh, good, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and agents can't be trusted. I mean, that's kind of new sort of thinking in the yeah. marketplace, that you don't don't trust the, the agents, don't give the LLMs your credentials, give them the bots can be trusted, right? So I want to kind of test that with you, and then, you know, that's where the guardrails come in. And then you're going after the what we call the agent control framework, yeah. And you're putting a big invest. That's a high value piece of real estate there, yeah. Uh, so, so how is that resonating with the with the customers that you've talked to here? Yeah, there's two things at Forward which are pretty interesting and resonating. That I, uh, well, well, one is the amount of discussion on governance and security and trust, like the fact that we've Discuss, had, had this woven throughout our entire event, really, to all of our keynotes. It's sort of um, kind of unmatched. Most people, many of these guys are just talking about like these little agents and they have no governance, no control. And I think, I think we bring a level of seriousness to it, which we brought in the world of automation. If you look at uh, RPA, the, the areas that robots are used are mission critical or business critical today, right? Like they are, they've got to be highly resilient, highly reliable, right? Very trustworthy. And so, you know, we believe we have a unique opportunity here to actually be the at the center of the orchestration of you know agents that are LLM based, robots that are you know highly resilient and and precision oriented, people because it's all about the workers, yeah. um, making them more creative and 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 more productive, and then models, and so and then we added another level of complexity to this and say look we're also going to be very open our as a, as a as a framework for the company you can bring your own agents. You can bring, you know, Benioff's Salesforce agent for this, this siloed CRM stack if you need it for a certain use case, and we can orchestrate that. You can bring your own model. We announced uh, several partnerships here with Inflection AI, Anthropic. We also have H Company and OpenAI and others. Um, and so, you know, we're going to be the Switzerland, I think, and that ability to orchestrate the reality of the complexity that, you know, our customers know it's is what's needed to deliver AI in in real work and real complex work. So 
it's resonating uh, very well. I'm very, very, it's, yeah, I was worried, right? Because this is a big move and I couldn't be more thrilled by the excitement. So I'd love to test some of that with the independent analyst. Craig, you said that you worked, used to work for the dark side, but then came to the analyst community. And then <laughs> you, I think, honestly and transparently said, that's not always so pretty either. <laughs> so we know that well. Yeah. Uh, but um, UiPath is essentially making the case that you really can't do effective agentic without automations slash RPA is what my inference is. Um, do you buy that? Um, I, I do. Uh, in other words, I, it's pretty simple to me. A lot of the um, AI is helping with the human intent understanding. It's helping to reduce the friction between the applications and so forth. But without taking that human intent and doing something with it, getting something done, it becomes kind of sterile. So a lot of my uh, analyst colleagues say things like, you know, if these process platforms, the mature ones, if they don't build AI into their platforms, they're gone. And I kind of say, well, you know what? AI needs the action component as much as the action component needs AI. It's a, it's a nice collaboration. And I'll build a, a little bit on what, um, uh, you know, say I was saying over here, Patrick was saying, you know, the, the, um, in the early days of RPA, when I covered it in 2016, there was so much talk about these credentials that these bots had, uh, you know, and how are we going to, we're going to have to put them in a vault. Yeah. Because if a bot was created and had access to those credentials, they're going into the banking system, right? So the whole metaphor of, you know, having a, um, a, tra a trail of when the bot was developed, how it was onboarded into the company, how it was offboarded, understanding who ever touched it and versioned it, that's the kind of thing that these guys have been working with for a long time. And a lot of folks coming into this have no clue. So you got to earn that trust, Bob. Did you have the 8 billion quote? I Because I, 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 I have a question for, for and I'm going to pick up on something that Bobby said about the Salesforce, I think you called it stovepipe or silo. Yeah. What's the 8 billion I'm quote? On the main you stage, you, you put forward a utopian vision. Uh, over the next 5, 10, 15 years, 8 billion people will say goodbye to a complex web of mobile apps, sites, and databases as AI dissolves the friction yeah. between humans and technology. Please, I want that. Okay, okay. I we all do. But, but that would just fly in the face of like decades and decades of, of IT industry and application history. So here's what I want to ask both of you. Uh, you correctly, I think, alluded to, look, Salesforce is going to do Agentic and ServiceNow is going to do it and Oracle is going to do it and Palantir and on and on and on. And your strategy is to, like you say, be that Switzerland across. Do you think, and they're going to have some advantages within their own yeah, stacks. In their domain, they're going to be strong. Do you think it's like feasible that the industry will be able to create an abstraction, the industry, UiPath specifically, create an abstraction layer and solve this problem that Rebecca and I and everybody so wants to solve? Well, the abstraction layer has been created by yeah. the AI interfaces. I mean, I talked on stage about uh, turning piles of data into a conversation. You couldn't do that before. You know, the insurance policies that we have, tortured by, we both have places in Florida, by the way, totally tortured by, Hell right? Yeah. Um, they're, they're as transparent as concrete. They're written by lawyers, for other lawyers to read. They mean nothing almost to the average homeowner. What if you could ask it questions? You know, if I should pass away, how much will my heirs get? How much have I paid for this policy over the last 10 years? That's the friction that is going to be gone. Um, so everyone's going to be able to do that. Uh, and, you know, and any of the um, more general platforms for co-pilots and uh, Gen AI, as well as the more specific platforms. And I think the specific part over here is dealing with these long run mission critical processes that have to integrate with all the old technology and do that well. Um, they're, they're long running. They have all kinds of issues that, uh, you know, the conversational uh, tools just never had to deal with. Yes, yeah, so, go ahead, please. Companies have a vested interest in keeping all that stuff exceedingly complex and opaque to the average homeowner. So I'm, I'm curious how that's going to work too. Well, if you're an insurance company from that, from that side, uh, you, you have an advantage. Um, you have a customer experience uplift if you can provide that conversation with your data. That's a good point, yeah. You know, and, they, and they'll do that, because they'll be pushed to it. Now, insurance is a bad example, because they're not the most competitive of <laughs> areas, yeah. right? No, we all know it. Uh, but uh, you'll see that across a lot of industries. So when I game it out, and think about this, Bobby, I, you have to have the back-end connections into those enterprise apps, because that's where all the business logic lives, all the data and the metadata. Or a UI. Which, 
Okay, but you had, that's your, your connection, right? Is that's right. Well, well, UI automation was uh, was the original, but then the API automation, now it's, it's either or, right? So, but right, we've already built an abstraction layer. I mean, that's what our, for deterministic, right? So in the world of, 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 of UiPath today, there, there's API connections to, you know, millions of apps. And then the, the UI, you can, you can do anything that a human worker can do. Now AI adds a new level of, of abstraction to that, but I, I don't know a single person that doesn't want to figure out how to like, reduce the complex, complexity, but they know that the reality is if you could just leave that stuff alone and put a layer on top of that and let the AI do the work on top, that might actually be the easiest, easiest route. So maybe I'm overthinking it, and I think I am. This is, this is helpful because I've been hung up on this uh, data, harmonization. data harmonization layer, but basically what you're saying is look, irrespective of that data harmonization layer, which by the way, I think is really important to build the digital twin of your business and a digital representation of that business, but that's going to take a decade, Irrespective of that, you can, in theory, do a with agents what a human can do. And so a human has to deal with harmonizing data. The agents will have to deal with the harmonizing data. And, take the humans out you know, and, and the quit. challenge is, is I get into, again, in my random acts of automation, which I'm not pushing on the, on the <laughs> text here, you know, um, is that a lot of jobs exist because of this friction today. The reason you have a lot of guys in the middle office and the back office is because they have to deal with 27 apps that are confusing and they need this tribal knowledge to be able to figure out and navigate these corporate systems. An average broker, you know, spends 17% of their time navigating these back-end crappy systems, right? So um, there's going to be a big push to try to make that as smooth as possible, and AI interfaces will give it... So it's a journey to nirvana, my nirvana. Hmm. Your nirvana comes before mine. I think you said 27 or 28. Yeah, right. <laughs> my, nirv my nirvana comes in 2035, but I do think it's coming. <laughs> I'm serious about this. I think yeah. the whole the industries are going to be completely transformed by AI. By software. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And, and, but it's a step. Well, stone. the enterprise software thing, we're looking at, uh, you, know, uh, you know, app gen platforms that can allow you to build custom code. And you're essentially buying these enterprise apps because they embodied best practices, you know, and they were pre-built. Well, if you can build them so easily, and if the best practices are actually infused in the general training of the LLM, their value is diminished. So I'm not as dystopian to say that they go away, but their ability to keep adding on layers of value is going to be diminished by the ability to take app gen, kick gen AI and build software that's needed. And there are a lot of CEOs that are sitting there going, I, you know, I'd love to just get rid of Salesforce. I'd love to get rid of all this SAP stuff, you know? And Larda. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> the Klarna example, right? You see that? They say they get rid of it. I like the word, the phrase tribal knowledge. Yeah. Okay, so these agents are, are going to be able to observe humans, and because humans reason, AI can reason. I mean, we yeah. see it reason now with, with O1. Basically. Uh, you know, it says it's reasoning, but it, it's yeah. getting there. Jensen says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so but, but, my thinking is that agents will be able to follow the reasoning traces of humans and then adapt to them and learn. Um, do you buy that? How long is that going to take? Um, the key is the guardrail, so I think, because the reality, though, is, is how, do you, how, do you, how do you keep an agent purpose-based, right? In a, in it's confines of the, of the role it's trying to do, like for a, a BDR agent or for an event management agent, you know, at a, at, that helps with event management and things and doesn't end up, you know, straying from its particular type role, right? This is why we always say, like for us, it's it's humans using agents, agents using robots, and can that can that can that can that agent then use robots then to harvest information within the enterprise back to that secure systems of record or whatever, and pull that data in that's appropriate just for that role, right? To keep the role, so that, you know, it's what do you think it's a small language model, maybe yeah, SLM. I, I I don't know, but like I think you've got to have it very very tightly role based. And very so that you know so that it has you know memory on that role that it's tied to that role, and that's a challenge right now because you know we all use ChatGPT all the time, but it's got all this information, all this data, and it goes to lots of different directions. And we want to keep it nice and tight. I think that's a big part of yeah. trying to ground the agent. And that's where the uh, context grounding becomes right. really important. So you're basically taking the enterprise data and putting it into an environment that's an absorber the LLM, and that's narrowing you know, that's providing some of the guardrails that you want the agent to do. And that's what we're all trying to figure out how to do that the best. I, I would think there's that- there's still a human in that process too, who is checking and making sure that the, oh, it's not straying, that the it blind is. blind judgment. 
Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I would think you have a better chance of controlling those agents with a strong governance framework than you do of controlling humans. A lot of cowboys out there are keeping people in their swim lane and organizations is very difficult. Well, you know, I, I, I tell people, I'll say, talk about hallucinations of 3% and this or that. I said, I got guys that, or I've worked with that are hallucinating all the time. <laughs> you know, I mean, this is not, this is not a strictly software-based problem that we have, right? Uh, yeah. So. so I want to go back to the workers because this, this is, I think, where the, where the rubber meets the road here in terms of what you foresee as the biggest changes that will affect the kinds of skills that that organizations are looking for and the kinds of the ways in which we will do our jobs on a day-to-day -day basis. Right, so I'll give, you, I'll give you my two from, again, the random acts of automation, <laughs> uh, you know, that- Available uh, on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. I think there's an optimistic path for the middle, that the middle uh, using AI can do the work of more highly trained and credentialed professionals. You'll see this the nurse practitioner gets even a better salary and a better work. Uh, the, the paralegal, you know, your law firm in the future will have a few licensed attorneys and then a lot of super paralegals, you know. Um, um, you know, so there's an optimistic path. Now, the numbers don't work out that great. Not everybody's going to be dumped out of their 22 million cubicles in the U.S. and, they, you know, have the constructive ambition and the critical thinking to really move in this direction. That's one. I think it's a very optimistic path for the uh, what we what I call um, human touch workers, which is the lowest level of service workers. Um, all of this ro physical robotics that we're doing, which are now getting integrated with LLMs, is going to make their jobs a lot safer. The three Ds, you know, dirty, dangerous, and I forget the other one. But the janitor that now is you're managing three janitorial robots, right? The security officer that's managing a, a fleet of androids. These jobs are going to get a lot better and safer and higher value, and they're going to get paid more. The numbers are still a problem, but for many, there is a path if you apply some of the principles, again, in the random acts of automation, uh, to, to really move in that direction. Uh, but unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of people from the middle that are going to drop to the frontline service worker category, and many digital elites, that's the upper end category that will fall into the middle. as. Gen AI, um, uh, you know, disrupts their uh, knowledge-based work that they do. Um, so there's going to be this, you know, shifting. That's why in the cover you see all these workers floating and moving from, they're really just moving from where they are. And at the, how they move, when they move, is something that I argue they have control of. Given the lack of uh, consistency and sometimes quality of LLMs and the expense, I mean, these things are expensive to run, um, and Bobby, you mentioned small language models, yeah. and that's really your game, is going into industry-specific situations and Kate, extracting or, or leveraging proprietary data yeah. for competitive advantage. So uh, okay, take us through sort of your vision and maybe even timeline as to when the value of those types of activities will uh, offset through better governance, proprietary data, and maybe more efficient smaller language models offset those, the value offsets the cost. How far away are we? You have a timeline, I think, didn't you? Well, yeah, we discussed this earlier a bit yeah. as well, we yeah. backstage. Yeah, I'm thinking 27, 28, our clients are saying basically, I'm not seeing the ROIs immediately from doing agent work. We say, you just got to get on the boat. You just got to get on the path. They'll come. A lot of the agent work takes over more cognitive activities that aren't as easily ROI'd as the traditional you know, UiPath RPA bot that's doing repetitive work. They, you know, something that's done uh, 1,200 times a month, you know, by 37 people. You know, that, it's a different game. It's different business value and ROI game with this stuff. But the end game is transformation, doing things very differently, introducing new products, new business models. That's the real opportunity well, here. And I think there's, you, you, there's different categorization of agents. You have this in your, in your talk, right? Yeah. And, you know, the agents that might have the, out, the biggest outcomes early may not be the, the ones that are the sexiest to, to, to talk about, the, you know, the one that does all your flights and, and things. Um, you know, we, we out, uh, unveiled the healing agent today. And one of our big focuses as a company is on reducing the, uh, or, uh, the change management required when an automation breaks. And we had this curve we showed, uh, Raghu showed, our CTO showed, of how much now, how, how much we track when automations break. And, and, and the ability to actually make sure that we can repair them. And so there's an entire agent was built, LLM-based agent, we call it a healing agent. It's used in, it's used on automation cloud, and it's going to make a, 
kind of a, a order of magnitude change in that curve as we kind of work towards reducing or eliminating, you know, uh, errors in robot operations. So that is a real agent. It's LLM based. It's it, it's it's got a real purpose to it. Um, but it's you know it's not your agent sitting on your desktop. So there are different categories of agents. I think that will mm -hmm. you know customer service agents are obvious ones, right? Yep. But operations agents may be ones that have earlier earlier value because they're more guardrail naturally. Right. Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. Um, and I basically tell our clients go in the operations area for your first agents. Yeah. You know, go to your know your customer application, your customer onboarding, mid office and back office. They're facing employees, they're coworkers with employees that are doing operational things. Absolute safest area, probably highest ROI area to get going with. Uh, don't have too much customer interaction just yet. Well, and to your point, I mean, RPA ROI was a no brainer. It was really clear. And then when UiPath came out and lowered the denominator, the cost yeah, right. of yeah. doing it, that was That's why they're here. It became infinite, exactly. It's a little fuzzier, but there's a lot of money on the table, though, I think. In that whole equation, though, Dave, you, you think you should have renegotiated? No, so I mean, the outcomes are so huge for our customers, and, and <laughs> you know, uh, so it's kind of fun. It's just, I mean, it's great, and the outcomes are amazing. But you know, well, we left some money on the table. It, it's interesting talking to the GSIs now who are leaning into AI and specifically Agentic. They're trying to negotiate gains, you know, gain sharing. Yeah, and and those are always you know, you've got some experience probably yeah. with Forrester doing this. I, I remember from my IDC days, um, it's always a funny thing. It's like wow, that could be a big number, but then it's like well, some customers say oh, great, you save that, oh. and maybe it's a one-time sort of yeah. uplift. I don't know, but wow. um, but I guess the, the 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 point is we had a conversation about productivity yesterday. We have not seen a sustained productivity boom like we have from the yeah. PC revolution, yeah. Yeah. which lasted almost a decade. And we're promising, essentially the promise of AI is that we have a long sustained period. And that's where I think, even though the ROI is kind of fuzzy, the transformation I, will become well, evident I would, I would when we look back. We, are, we haven't is because of the friction. It's because yeah. we are all drowning in this admin, ad, admin that is affecting how productive we can be because we have to yeah, this usually mess absolutely. around absolutely. with all these different apps. I know. And so, so okay, but, so we we eliminate. We it. think that you know, Google and Facebook and and and, and Amazon and and Microsoft are invincible. Right, they'll never, because we know from history that's, that's going to change. And so I expect there are going to be AI native companies that come out, they're going to do things for one tenth the cost. You know, we've talked about yeah. this, yeah. and, and you know, 10 times faster that are going to disrupt industries. So my question is do they have to lean in to RPA, or will they invent something new? Can, is there is, is there something you guys got cooking in the labs? <laughs> well, there have been there have been some startups in the agentic space that have had some great vision on on that front, but the execution of the action side was missing, and I think that's always underestimated. And I think that um, the security side, it's not that it's underestimated; it's just it's so significant. So I agree, Rebecca, with the friction, but the security part of this because of agents and LLMs, is so big mm -hmm. that I think you, you got to break through both of those. But people often forget the importance in this whole thing of being able to go do reliable, resilient executions or actions based on whatever, uh, whatever intelligence comes out of the system. And so I think, you know, that's where it's nice to have a very safe, reliable, trusted, proven workhorse that can do this. And that's what we're, that's, that's where we come in. And I think that part of the story is underappreciated right now in the Benioff, Satya. Well, I think, I think compliance and governance and security is more important than ever. It's, it's, it's no longer the afterthought. All right. We don't even think about it in PCs and, and even you know, cloud, okay, a little bit. Yeah, no, but, but right. today it's like table stakes. You can't do anything you know, reasonable without it or you're going to get in big trouble. Yeah and cost totally. your company a lot of money, and we've seen examples of that. Totally. Even our partner with Inflection AI, though, I'll say, I've been surprised by the amount of people who have wanted to have meetings on that today, right? Because here it is, on-premises, private cloud, maybe, right? And, you know, it's kind of the antithesis of the all-go, everything to cloud story, but people are so worried about the LL, where the you know, LLMs and where that's running and what's in that data and who own, controls that. You know, yeah. uh, you heard the company, uh, maybe you all didn't because you were doing a, a great videos, uh, 
uh, live videos, but um, Eversource, the energy company. Yeah. So she's on stage. They're coming they, on later. They're coming on later. Yeah. And then, you know, they've shifted from an automation COE to an AI factory. It's an energy company. Like, it's going to matter where a lot of this data sits, right? Particularly when it becomes very operational for them, right? Or is security conscious. So the interest level in how to secure LLMs, it's really high, right? Or how to, you know, wall them off or, or guardrails. And I think that's, that's again, that's been underappreciated. Totally, yeah. 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 So I talked nice. to a couple of Wall Street guys about the, the analyst meeting that you guys had this week. They're very positive um, about Act Two. Yeah. Of course, they want to see. Okay, let's see the kind of a similar dominance that you had in the previous you know, Act One. And so, uh, yeah, it's there for your taking, Bobby. So I'll say a few things about that, which is why you know being with Craig is so important, right? So Craig was there when we when, when uh, he actually put RPA sort of on the map, right, with the legitimization through your wave in 2017, right? Yep. And um, this is moving so fast. And I don't want to speak for Craig on this, right? But I think the thinking is a similar about this. Op it, this is that kind of category. One of the other analyst firms has actually sized the market. I'm not sure if you sized it yet, right? No, we have not. So they sized it, right? This is public public data. It goes from zero to 4.2 billion in four years in software. The services opportunity is like 15 billion in new sales in in, in that four years. Who knows if we're off by four or what? Right? For Agentic? For thing? Agentic Automate, for agents, not for robots. Yeah. RPA is a separate. Yeah. For the agent part portion of that, right? Maybe we're off by a billion two one way or the other, right? But the slope of that is pretty intense. But we need the 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 education of the market. We need the analysts to be able to coalesce around this. We need the formalization of evaluation landscapes. We need, but it, it's going to happen at such a faster pace now, Craig, I think, right? This yeah. is not two, three years from now. I agree. I agree. It's at the same point uh, where RPA was in 2016. Yeah. You know, and it's moving a lot faster than RPA. Right. You know. For, excellent. Well, we could talk to you, both of you, all day about this. This is a great conversation. Thank you both Thanks, so much guys. for coming on theCUBE, Bobby and Craig. And good well, luck with the book. Oh, thank you very much for mentioning yeah, it. I really yeah. appreciate that. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of our live coverage of UI Pass Forward 2024. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.